what what happened there? How are you? I'm great. That was scary for a second. Just about just about carked it before the beginning of the space. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm I'm fine and uh we will wait for a few minutes for all the party going crowd to join in. And it's going to be fun. We have a lot of things to talk about. Um yeah, definitely very, very eventful week there was from our side. So we will talk all about that. Absolutely. A lot, a lot to cover today and should be pretty exciting with the asset swap party. Absolutely. And there was another interesting announcement, which we will also talk about quite a bit about the Nefrit stable. Absolutely. This is, this is cool. I added the publisher key in the Depnet wallet earlier, had to play around got confused, got more familiar. And I, and I just prior to starting this space, I tried to trade some uh, Nifrite for some BMX on the test net, on the DAP net wallet, sorry. But I, I didn't have enough, so I, I got stuck. <laughs> don't, don't worry. I, I think by the end of tonight, you will have enough because uh, it's one of the tokens that we're going to swap today during the swap party. So, yep. Um, well, uh, the merge uh, has happened. So we're, we're all merged yeah. now. The post merge. Yes. Yeah. Definitely very interesting. Uh, it went well, which is good. And now we have some kind of uh, post merge uh, exploits, you know, people replaying transactions, doing all kinds of experiments with. Uh, the remaining proof of work chain, interesting stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I th there, there was like a really interesting, just while we're on the, the merge topic, there was a really interesting like, tweet from Eric, always forget his last name, a uh, really intelligent guy and, and shares his thoughts and pushes back on a lot of the like Bitcoin maximalism, toxicness stuff. Uh, but like an avid supporter of Bitcoin. But one of the tweets he sent out was like, the best trade around the merge was that real like weird coin created by that Richard Hart guy that's a bit of a character. Anyway, he said like, the best trade was this because like it didn't rely on any oracles, it didn't rely on this, it didn't rely on that, blah, 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 uh, which I thought was kind of funny and and an interesting point i mean no idea what it's doing on on ethpow or whatever but it did point out like the need for a lot of centralized components or a lot of components that have elements of centralization in them for some of these like unstoppable defi applications that all stopped like when there was a fork on on whichever chain eric wall thank you yeah Russell. eric wall of course yeah, yeah so it's it's absolutely true uh, because, uh, you know, there was uh, quite a lot of um, theory about uh, this fact that the, in actuality, the uh, let's say the correct chain was mostly uh, chosen by centralized entities. Uh, the stable coins, the Oracle providers. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. Very kind of controversial, uh, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, so listen, we have quite a lot of people uh, who joined uh, in already. We know most of them, which is good. Um, so we will start with the kind of um, a quick overview of what's going to happen today. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming. So today we are going to uh, test our new feature, which uh, is uh, going to be released as part of the 7.2 version of the Beam Desktop Wallet, and it's called the Asset Swap. And I hope that every one of you has a... Uh, Dapnet wallet uh, installed. So we're going to play on Dapnet, which is our testing network, network for applications. And uh, uh, it's very nice. And uh, the process is going to go like this. I'm going to create uh, several different types of asset swaps and offers. Uh, like I will create a few and then I will explain how it works. And we have a special uh, asset created just for tonight or for this kind of party. It's called a star, so we're kind of going to be catching stars in, in space. Um, and 
These stars, which you will collect uh, using asset swaps on .NET, can be later exchanged for real beams on mainnet one-to-one, -one, using a process that I will explain uh, a bit later. So the more kind of stars you collect from the offers that I uh, uh, create, then basically you will have uh, more beam. And uh, obviously, whoever catches the swap first, uh, can uh, enjoy it. Now, I see that a lot of people, or some people figured out that they can also create offers to ask for stars in exchange for beams. And yeah, uh, <laughs> you are welcome to create those. And they also accept some of them later. Uh, please do not exaggerate the amounts. I mean, you know, stay humble. It will be fine. And the main purpose of this event is to test this feature which means that if you notice any problems uh, with the feature or with your wallet or some strange behavior or something is not working, you are uh, very welcome and indeed asked to uh, report it to us either through our support Telegram channel uh, or if you don't have access to Telegram, just uh, in replies to the tweet for this space. And even though we will probably not be able to respond in real time, we will definitely analyze all of your issues and get back to you and try to investigate it. So it will be very helpful for us to test this feature uh, because this feature is um, based on our uh, SDBS mechanism to create these orders and to broadcast them to the wallets. And uh, uh, it's kind of the best way to test it using this kind of mass message stress test. So create as many offers as, as possible, accept many offers as possible. Uh, if you don't have enough BIM, now all of the offers that I'm going to create will be uh, for BIM. You can always go to the faucet application in the applications uh, uh, in the App Store and uh, get uh, some BIM from the faucet. I hope it does not run out. So this is how it's going to go down. Obviously, if you have any questions during the space uh, about what's happening or anything else, you're always welcome to raise your hand and ask. Um, so let me just... Uh, uh, start the first offer so let me send well, let's start with 10 10 stars going for 10 beam and then um, now we'll create the offer How much time it takes it to disappear boom it's gone wow that was fast yeah. i was yeah i was still opening my wallet <laughs> No, man, you, you can't earn any beam uh, like that. No. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so it's definitely, uh, yeah, it's definitely very, very interesting and working. Now, uh, just uh, to uh, go over how this feature actually works. So uh, when you open the wallet on the left, uh, there is a third button from the top, the one with the gavel, like an auction type. And if you click on it, you go into the asset swap screen in which you see the active offers. So right now, from what I see, there are about 50 or something, I don't really count it, uh, of different offers. Now, obviously, um, accept the offer if you have enough money. If you don't have enough money, it will just not go through. You will be uh, presented with a dialogue saying that you don't have enough funds to accept this offer. Or you create, can create an offer of your own using the Create Offer button in the top right corner. So let me use that, and it opens the Create uh, Offer dialog. So first I will select the coin that I want to uh, send. So let me select uh, Nifrit. I have a, a few. And uh, let me send like a hundred Nifrit uh, for, let's say, I don't know, 500. And also you can see here two things. First of all, you see the offer expiration time. So obviously, uh, you know, the prices of assets can change. So you don't need necessarily to uh, have your offer lying around forever. And in this dialogue, you can choose uh, an interval between 30 minutes or 12 hours. Uh, you also have the exchange rate, which is not necessarily working because it relies on the prices of tokens, and most of these tokens don't have price yet, uh, being sent from uh, our kind of um, in-wallet uh, broadcasts of, of prices. So it's not an oracle, it's just this kind of informative uh, feed that the wallets receive. Uh, you can also add a comment just with any uh, beam transaction and then you publish the offer. So now I have this offer published. Uh, so whoever has 500 beam and wants to get uh, 100 Nifrit coins to play with uh, will accept it. This one is sticking around, which is great. So let it, let it lie here.
Oh, and it's gone. Uh, on the uh, where do you have the list of offers, you have three tabs. So you have the active, active offers, your or create any, and the transactions. So right now I see that the previous swap has already gone through and the second swap uh, is currently in progress. When you click on the details uh, on this line of the transaction, obviously you can see all the details, how much fee was paid, uh, the sending address, the date, and all of the other uh, related uh, data of this transaction. I think I covered most of it. Uh, obviously, you have the payment proof, you have the search, and all the regular features of any uh, kind of BIM transaction. You can filter. If you click on the asset uh, like, uh, card uh, on the top of the asset swap screen, you will only see the filtered uh, swaps for the specific coin that you want. And then to remove the filter, you just click on the remove filter uh, button that appears next to the uh, create offer a little bit under it. Okay, cool. Yeah, now I would like to uh, take this uh, moment and opportunity to thank uh, some of the people who worked on this feature that are here with us in this space. I recognize a few of them. Of course, I will not say their names because, you know, privacy, but some of them are saying it's great. Absolutely. Okay, okay so let's create a new, uh, another offer for um stars are we ready okay let me select the star here okay just one star this time for one beam going to be published three boom and it's gone okay that works um okay so let me go and accept some offers who does have here offer for Freed. Let's see. No active offers for Freed. Any offers for BMX? BMX for Beam. Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting trade. I don't think I have enough BMX to take that. Oh, this is a great offer. One BMX for one Beam. Let me accept that. Cool. That works as well. Uh, now, just to kind of uh, explain uh, how this is different from two things. First of all, how it's different from a centralized exchange and how it's different from a uh, AMM swap DEX. So the centralized exchange works on orders and uh, orders can be split. So for example, if I want to sell, uh, let's say a thousand beam and I put an offer for a thousand beam on a centralized exchange, it can be filled up gradually, right? So somebody wants to take 100, 200, 300 until we reach the thousand, and then my uh, order is gone. In our case, however, it's not really possible to do that because underneath it all, uh, eventually it's the UTXO model. So you have a UTXO which cannot be easily split in, in this transaction. We can theoretically implement some kind of like accumulation feature and then like create one transaction for all of the participants. The problem with that is if one of the participants drops out and then transaction can no longer, nobody gets their, their exchange, right? Which is why we have decided in this specific version to just uh, keep it simple. And we have actually implemented it based on the same logic as our atomic swaps feature, right? So you create an offer, the offer is atomic. And just as an example, let me create another offer for 10 stars. For 10 beam. Here you have it. Okay, it, it was gone before I even switched to my offer stop to see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, let me try another one. So um, the DEX actually works uh, in a different way. Which DEX is this? The... Any DEX. Okay. Yeah. yeah, any DEX actually works in a different way. Um, because having a DEX is basically you have a smart contract that has a pile, like two piles of coins, uh, one from each side, and uh, they kind of balance around the price on the market, right? So that's basically uh, how it works. So whenever you have a trade going on, like you exchange one coin for another, there is some disbalance that created, and then there are the treasures balancing back. 
Uh, and obviously, we are also going to implement our DEX uh, on the BIM blockchain. So I know that there are some people in the community. Where, where is it and when is it coming? So it, it is, it's in the works. Um, and uh, once again, you have this more flexibility. So it's like not exactly, uh, you know, um, like it's, it's using a different mechanism. You don't need a price feed. You're just uh, kind of balancing two, uh, two stacks of diff coins of different type using some logic. Usually it's a, a constant product, which is basically the idea that the more you exchange of one coin, the higher is the price of the other one, right? So you cannot just uh, take all of the coins from one side because every time you take a coin from one side, the price of the next coin goes up following this constant product formula. And this, what you're describing now is very... Uh, Uniswap, well, Uniswap, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. And, and any, almost any index uh, uses this principle. The only thing that changes uh, usually is uh, how this specific uh, constant product formula or, or in general formula is uh, specified. And also in some cases, how liquidity uh, is distributed across the uh, price axis. Because for example, this is the main difference between Uniswap uh, V2 and V3. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So, do we have any questions? If you do have any questions now or at any point during the call, during the space, just throw your hand up and I will bring you up. Um, yeah. So, um, the next um, kind of topic I would like to discuss because um, you know, we have quite a lot of them today, uh, is uh, the uh, announcement that was published today uh, of um, Nifrit, which is a uh, stable coin on uh, Beam Network. Um, like I think most of, most of you saw it. Uh, if yeah. I'm speaking a little bit slower, it's because I'm also creating some offers in the background. Ooh. And and this was like the tweet came out from Nefri. Obviously, they've been working on this for a while, considering that it is up on the DAPnet already. Is that right? Yeah. So it's uh, uh, currently deployed on uh, DAPnet, this very uh, network that we're on today. So while you are uh, already in uh, our DAPnet wallet, uh, you are more than welcome to find the publisher ID, go to the uh, DAP store screen and add a new publisher. And when you will add this publisher ID, you will see the Nifrit application. You can install it. Once again, important to note that it's a completely decentralized application that is distributed using the IPFS network in a completely, nice. completely uh, anonymous way. So yeah, it's uh, uh, one of the first kind of uh, uh, uses of uh, our decentralized DAP store feature, which is also, in addition to all of the other things, is also very nice. And, um, and yeah, this is, this is a great example. Like they sent out the tweet and it had their publisher key on it. And by adding this into the wallet, you can see the, the applications that they've kind of put forward, right? Yeah. So, um, like, I'm not going to talk about uh, this application today because, uh, uh, you know, after all, it's an asset swap party. But I think, uh, like, you should definitely, all of you, check it out uh, because of several reasons. First of all, it's the first ever, in my opinion, uh, really confidential stablecoin on confidential layer one network being created. Uh, and the second reason is that it's uh, pretty complex. Uh, it's collateral based and um, uh, it has quite a few things and like special features which do not exist uh, anywhere else, even though like you, you will see some similarity between uh, Nifrit and uh, uh, coins like uh, uh, MakerDAO Die uh, or Liquidity uh, in terms of like how the uh, CDPs are created, collateralized debt positions. So you basically create uh, over collateralized position where you um, lock something like uh, X, I don't remember exact number, like 120 minimum, I think, or 110% of BIM to borrow uh, some amount of uh, uh, 
Nifrit, which is the stable token. And uh, then your position uh, can be adjusted. It's called the trove in this specific application. You will see it. But then you also have additional features, like you can then take your uh, Nifrit coins and you can put them back into the stability pool, which then is used for liquidating weaker positions and you earn money that way. So yeah, obviously there will be a lot of questions. Um, once again, it requires a completely kind of uh, separate topic to talk about. Um, but yeah, check it out and uh, ask questions and I'm uh, sure that uh, any free team will be uh, answering those definitely on Twitter. And uh, it's a very, very exciting time. Like I think we've been waiting for, for this moment like for quite a while. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is like both the asset swap coming through the stable coin Nifrit on Depnit also. Uh, I mean, this is what we talked about a few times in the past about like the the DeFi applications running on Beam with the privacy that Beam entails really coming through to fruition this year. Yeah, Exciting times. Yeah, it's really coming through. I mean, uh, uh, after all, we have uh, been delivering uh, you know, quite several applications already from our side, like bands and uh, uh, the asset swaps. Uh, and, uh, we also uh, have the bridges coming. And speaking of the bridges, uh, I would like to create an offer now for one very interesting token, uh, which you will see. It's called BUSDT, and it's actually mm -hmm. yes, it's actually our test uh, token from our like in sessions. Ah, yeah. So I don't think any of you has any of those. And this this is an interesting thing because uh, I, I was talking to someone. Actually, I was talking to Rascal earlier today about like what the use for the like creating a trove through Nifrit and uh, having like the stable coins and this kind of thing. And and the first one for me that came to mind was like. Uh, uh, I have some beam. I want to have some dollars to spend in my bank account or whatever. Not dollars, I guess, because no one accepts them here. Anyway, uh, but I don't want to sell my beam. So I can take a, open a CDP or open a trove and, and mint some uh, free, the ticker. Oh my God, I forgot the ticker. MPH? Yes. Wicked. I can create some MPH. And then I can exchange that MPH for, say, uh, the USDT that is bridged to Beam and then bridge it back and send it to an exchange, put it on my card and spend it. Hmm. So this is pretty cool. I think yeah. that, and like, as we've seen with other kind of smart contract platforms, namely like Ethereum, the mark or rather the volume that like stable coin to stable coins do has been quite high. Something like curves. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like uh, once this is working, like there is quite a lot of things that can be done with it. That's for sure. Like, I, I don't know how uh, uh, Weekly, it will get listed and where, but uh, it's definitely going to be a popular item on uh, our internal DEXs and uh, swaps. Absolutely. Um, okay, so um, it's going very well. I am creating kind of uh, more and more offers. Um, Any questions so far? Like everybody being too quiet. Either everybody is sitting and like monitoring these stars, uh, which is also a good idea. Like my offers like disappear, like pew, boom. Is it real people or, or did somebody already write a bot to this? <laughs> I definitely didn't. I definitely didn't write a bot. <laughs> <clears throat> you know. Uh, we didn't provide an API for this feature yet. Uh, it's still in the works. It will be ready for the 7.2 release. Uh, and uh, uh, before we started this, uh, I think Amir asked me like uh, how difficult would it be to write a bot for that. I said like it, it's not you know, going to be possible because uh, we don't have an API ready. And then I, um, I, I remembered 
uh, when Beam was launched, uh, which is, by the way, soon is going to be like four years ago, uh, in January 19, um, we were uh, kind of launching without an API for the wallet. Uh, because we didn't like we thought like we're going to launch and then like maybe at some point later exchanges will be integrating us yeah and and then we uh started seeing on the launch day we started seeing announcements from various exchanges that are going uh you know be trading beam when it's launching and we're like how is it possible we didn't provide an api so it turned out they have created a wrapper around our command line wallet uh, and uh, just, you know, they just launched it, you know, doesn't matter, API, no API, we're launching that. <laughs> it, it was really very funny. Yeah, this is cool. And, I, and like this shows how like good a kind of environment, at least I feel, in, in crypto, like if there's something to be built, then people will build it, which is very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's kind of... Uh, always amazing to see like for example uh this idea to create offers for stars yeah you know beforehand I, yeah it was the, I, I opened the wallet like sometime before the space and there was this one offer uh, of uh, ones like uh, to exchange one star from my side for one beam and i like accepted it and then the second later there was like a you know 10 more <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i got excited yeah, so it's, it's always amazing to see like uh, people really trying stuff and following like what we're doing. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of what we're doing, and let me create another offer here. You know, I didn't know it was so difficult to talk and create offers at the same time. I think <laughs> I, need to, I need to practice that. Um, but uh, do you remember our long-term plans to add Ethereum virtual machine to BIM? Yeah, we've we've talked about this a few times or a couple of times, a few times in spaces, and and I may have even covered it a little bit in the newsletter that goes out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is actually happening, you know, and um, uh, I will give you kind of uh, uh, a riddle, I think. So there is a branch somewhere in BIM repository uh, with a nondescript name on which even right now you can see some progress that was made uh, on the EVM integration. Interesting. And, yeah. So the first person who finds this branch and uh, tweets about it uh, will, uh, I don't know, get some uh, stars. Um, I, I don't exactly how it's in Twitter. I can definitely do it in Telegram bot, but, uh, you know, let's start with Twitter. Just tweet this branch and we will find a way to give you some stars. Okay. And this is on, this is like a public repo. Yep. Different branch yes. from mainnet branch or, or master. Exactly. Branch. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. And, and like a question from my side, like what is the intention and reason for looking towards adding support for EVM? So um, it has two kind of, you know, one is the immediate reason, being able to run Solidity contracts on Beam Network. So we will have basically two different types of uh, contracts supported. One is native Beam contracts like we have today. Uh, which run on BVM, Beam Virtual Machine, and these are implemented in C++. We also recently uh, talked about some bindings for Rust, so you can uh, use uh, these languages to write contracts, and then they're compiled into WebAssembly, and Beam Virtual Machine runs WebAssembly. But now you will also have an option to use Solidity and basically take uh, contracts that are running on Ethereum and other EVM-compatible chains, and run them on Beam directly, which obviously increases quite a lot uh, our reach for developer community, existing contracts that are already running on uh, uh, Ethereum compatible chains, and uh, give them kind of this underlying layer of privacy, right? Obviously, the contracts themselves are not private, just like in Beam they are not, but the entire kind of transaction system underneath it uh, on the layer one is private. The other, the second part of the why uh, is uh, that it's going to be a part of our kind of more long-term strategy of also allowing running uh, sidechains 
uh, between kind of Beam and Ethereum uh, and connecting them with bridges, or in terms of like if, if we're talking about Beam main chain and side chains, then it's going to be probably uh, using um, our uh, light client versions. So it's a little bit similar to what uh, in Cosmos ecosystem we see in the blockchain communication protocol. Okay, uh, yeah. The way it works and like the main difference between uh, IBC type uh, interchain communication and bridges is that you don't need a trusted party because since both chains use the same technology, they uh, actually uh, understand the state of the other chain, right? So they can track the changes of the other chain, which is the main di like difficulty in, in bridging chains, right? You need to know what happens on the other chain in order to make decision of whether to lock or unlock funds on your chain. So, yeah, uh, yeah so this is kind of the uh, next step. And even though like uh, Beam may remain proof of work, uh, the side chains can actually use alternative consensus mechanisms such as proof of stake. And this will make them um, more flexible, both in terms of which consensus to use, in terms of how they can be deployed. So for example, it will to support uh, this concept of uh, application-specific chains, right, which is kind of becoming more popular, or at least was becoming, I don't know what will happen now with the proof-of-stake Ethereum, but in the proof-of-work Ethereum, it was becoming more popular because larger applications uh, kind of got tired of paying huge fees uh, for, um, uh, you know, their transactions on Ethereum blockchain. And um, it will also make it possible to create this kind of more interesting sidechain deployments connected to the main chain for validation uh, and make them quicker and which is by the way also possible using um uh, things like optimistic or zk rollups right because like on top of uh, these sidechains you can also use rollups so you okay. don't have uh, yeah you don't have any kind of uh, uh problem with that yeah so there have been a lot of interesting things. I got myself 10 crowns uh, from Ooh, somewhere. Nice. Yeah, uh, I don't know what they mean, but they look look nice. OK, so I can send 75 BMX. I don't want to send BMX. I want to get BMX. <laughs> who, is, who is trading for that? I want that. Nobody gives me BDI. No, no. Okay, 400 crowns more for 400 beam. No, I don't have enough. Uh, it's a problem. All of the offers I see, I cannot take. You know what? Let me let me take. Uh, no, BUSDT is not nice. Let's see what else can I give. Everything is so expensive on this marketplace. I I can't afford anything. Even on Dubnet. People, people are using very big numbers. Where, where I'm sitting here with two BMX, zero point six MPH, and zero star. So I'm, I'm very at a loss over here. Oh, so, somebody <laughs> generously, somebody generously offered, offered me a uh, hundred. Ah, no, I'm sorry. Where is that? A hundred BMX for ten thousand B? Are you crazy? Ooh, okay, nice. I'll, I'll, ha I'll have to accept that. Uh, you know what? When you need it, you need it. That's really cool. We need, we need to do it more often. Yeah, I I have a question, uh, and and it kind of relates to the first point that you were talking about, in that the asset swaps it'll be like uh, all or nothing. I think this is is this like a a term all or nothing like. A, I, I yeah. know on a centralized exchange, you can put in like a all or nothing order, and that means that people can only kind of buy your whole order. Which oh, is really? The same. Yeah. I didn't know you can do that. I can't remember if that's the exact uh, term for it, but I think I've used it on Gate before, maybe. Uh, so maybe the maybe the term's different. But I think that it's not that uncommon for exchanges where you can place an order and, and people only kind of have the option to take the whole order. Uh, 
but the question was, do you think that like the asset swaps will be worked on more to to kind of cater towards either like partitioning of of the whole order or like uh, being able to take a piece of the order, or do you think that the it will go to more towards the Uniswap style A and M decks where people can buy and sell? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yes, definitely. Uh, I think once we have the decks, uh, it will uh, attract all of this kind of fluid trading, and then uh, the asset swap will be reserved for more like OTC type deals. Yeah. Um, and uh, in this case, it's going to be kind of uh, used for, I think, larger uh, offers with a kind of fixed, uh, uh, you know, f fixed rate uh, instead of a more like dynamic trade. Yeah, this makes sense. Uh, yeah, so um, from what you can see, I hope you can see uh, the order of uh, the orders like are increasing. Uh, and they are actually very, very quickly taken. I saw, and, I, I saw one, and then it was gone before I could even read it. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I really hope it's real people because you know, after all, what's the point? Um, and also, when you are executing a swap, uh, if you can see, like, if you have like one UTXO or something, you will see that your balance temporarily changes to zero. Uh, so it's not a bug, actually. It's absolutely normal uh, because, you know, when you have one UTXO and while the transaction is in progress, uh, this UTXO is involved in the transaction and uh, it cannot be used for uh, any other. So this is um, uh, the, the kind of uh, behavior that UTXO based uh, transactions, you know, uh, exhibit. Yeah, this makes sense. And, and this is a question, I just see one offer come up here and it's one b w b t c for 50 beam is this also is this b w b t c also one of the assets that been has been used for uh testing with the bridges from ethereum uh yeah i believe so we have created several uh, uh different kinds of assets for this test uh, and they start with b however uh this is actually a very important question because it's not necessarily uh, that one, right? So anyone, as you know, can create a new asset and they can call it whatever they like. So what we need to, in order to verify, and this is kind of the important point uh, for everyone to be careful, uh, especially when we're talking about mainnet and real money, is uh, the ID of the asset like, uh, and not just the name because the names can be, uh, there is no uniqueness for the names. Okay. Um, it was actually an interesting debate because we wanted, like we thought about like, what about the name? Should it be unique or not? And we have decided that it's best not to make it unique uh, because then somebody like, you know, all of the popular coins uh, by adding B on all the variations and then the kind of, you know, real bridges will have problems. Um, mm -hmm. But what we are going to do, we are going to uh, use our SBBS based broadcast mechanism and we will create kind of verification lists uh, for specific asset IDs, and uh, obviously we're going to use it for the assets that Beam creates. But when other projects will uh, want to have verified assets, they will reach out to us. Yes, it's centralized, I know, uh, <laughs> but at least like uh, it's going to work through a contract, uh, so it's probably not going to be so it's not going to be hidden. It's going to be very transparent, like what which assets are registered. Uh, but as of now, I don't think there is any other way to. Uh, you know, to make sure that uh, the WBTC that you see is actually the WBTC that is uh, uh, that was created by by a specific team. This is a good point. So someone could have <laughs> someone could have created another asset with the same star name, have thousands of star right now. Yeah. Uh, but if they, if you had them both in the same wallet, obviously it would show up as two different balances. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. It would yeah. it would show up as two different balances. Uh, and also uh, in this specific case, when you will come back to exchange the real beam, uh, I will know. <laughs> 
Makes sense. And and you can have a look like I'm just in the assets what's at the moment. If you look if you click on like the individual assets, if you click on Beam X, you can see the balance info uh, available and, and this kind of stuff. And then if you click on asset info, it will tell you the asset ID for Beam X is three for for what I assume is the correct star is yeah. twelve. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, it's this kind of small uh, drop uh, drop down uh, on the on the pane on like the asset card, uh, and it shows you the asset information. So yes, uh, you are definitely correct. Uh, and uh, just uh, it's very important to uh, distinguish between these numbers. They are not absolute numbers. They are numbers per network. So these numbers are correct for the DAPnet. On the mainnet, they will have uh, different IDs. Okay, makes sense. And, yeah, so... and, and a question that I should probably know the answer to, but, <clears throat> but I don't. Uh, not the first time and, and won't be the last. But when you're creating an asset, do you have any like uh, choice as to the asset number ID or no? No, no. Okay. The asset number ID is allocated by, uh, uh, by the network. And is it like, um, uh, does it just progress as it goes along or is it uh, random? Yeah, it progresses uh, incrementally. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so there is a question in BIM Africa forum. And the question is, can what? Can dollar BIM be cloned? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Don't know what. The Scarlet, if you're listening, which I assume you are, let me have a look. Can yeah, you can just you? clarify uh, your question here in the Telegram. Uh, ah, can you can you ah. exchange like uh, Beam? Uh, like uh, yeah, it's like Beam. Beam is Beam. Uh, it's regular Beam. I, I don't know May what clone means. Maybe the question is, can uh, ah, can you create an asset called Beam? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you can, yes, uh, but it will definitely have a um, uh, you know all different parameters from the beam, which is the native coin. So basically, in terms of um, actual implementation, there is no difference in 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 the kind of how it works underneath between beam and confidential assets because uh, essentially it's just a different kind of generator um, without going into technical details which is what enables us uh, to be uh, uh, kind of have the same confidentiality level for uh, all of the confidential assets and being. But yes, it's definitely uh, important to watch for these things. Uh, like when somebody sends you BIM, you need to make sure that it's like BIM and not a confidential asset is the same. Name. That's for sure. Yeah. And, and this is like a very interesting point because if you look at something like Ethereum, Often you, if, if you're using like a application on Ethereum, in many cases you will have to, what's it called, like wrap your Ethereum to make mm -hmm. it WETH. Uh, yes. <clears throat> because Ethereum does not like conform to the ERC20 standard that they use or something like this. Uh, and also because the assets on top of Ethereum are not like, first class citizens as we've kind of coined it a few times. Absolutely. Uh, whereas on Beam, everything everything and everyone and every asset is equal uh, and especially with when it comes to privacy, which I think is a is a huge missing component in a lot of crypto and, and web three. Yeah, like uh, uh, obviously we can also create smart contracts that emulate uh, ERC twenty like behavior on Beam. Uh, however, it, it does not really have any benefits uh, and only has the drawbacks of being less private or like not private at all. Um, yeah. So uh, this is why um, we have added this uh, ability for smart contracts to assets, right? So for example, uh, the Beamx DAO. Uh, smart contract emits and controls the beam x asset so it's not controlled by a specific wallet which means that all of the emission and all of the rules for the emission are written in a contract that can be verified and uh, this is the way to ensure that you know 
uh, the asset will not uh, devalue. So like when you are looking at the asset, uh, it's always very important to not to, just to take it on, I don't know, face value, right? Like, let, let me give you an example. Like I have uh, 10 crowns and uh, I, I don't know exactly what they are. So I need to do some research and we will have to think like about a mechanism to kind of try to understand what it is. But if 10 crowns uh, are controlled by the wallet, it means that the owner of that wallet can at any time create an infinite amount of crowns. Uh, it's a very important point. Like you either have to trust the owner of this wallet, uh, or you have to, you know, have some other mechanism. However, if you, like, you know that these crowns are created by a smart contract, uh, then you can go and you have to verify like what the smart contract does and how it works, uh, and then you can be sure like how the emission uh, of these uh, uh, of these assets is controlled. That's that's a really interesting point, and it leads me to to a follow up question. Can you kind of have a uh, an asset that has kind of parameters built into how it trades and this kind of thing? Uh, if if we compare, <laughs> the, the only thing that comes to mind, or or as an example, is Safe Moon. And this was really strange, like <laughs> shit, shitty coin that gained a lot of like retail adoption somehow. I have no clue. Maybe maybe the name and and Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports was was shilling it and this kind of stuff. Uh, what what uh, or or could you create say an asset that every time you traded it, you had a uh, like. 10% of it was burned or 10% of it went to another wallet or, or something like this, like a, an implemented kind of tax on transactions. Yes. So <clears throat> in general, it's possible, uh, but it means that um, all trades uh, have to go uh, through a smart contract. So specifically uh, in like in Ethereum, that's always the case for any ERC twenty contract. Like you, you, you have to uh, go through a contract, which, by the way, uh, in the flip side, allows uh, smart contracts to kind of censor some transactions or create whitelists for addresses uh, and things like that. USDC does or whatever. Uh, but uh, out uh, Beam, like once you have this uh, confidential asset uh, in your wallet. It's yours, right? It's not in any contract, which is, by the way, this feature that we used uh, for NFT. Uh, we, we didn't implement it uh, yet in the main gallery, but we demoed it, like the ability to convert NFT in the contract into a kind of new uh, class of confidential uh, asset and trade it like privately. Uh, but you can create uh, some kind of um, like uh, mechanism that will emulate this ERC-20 behavior uh, to some extent. Uh, while still preserving some of the privacy. And a good example of that uh, is actually the bonds contract, right? Uh, so in bonds, when you send somebody funds to their uh, bank account, uh, you cannot then see like what is being done with them. And obviously nobody else can see uh, who is the sender and the receiver of those funds eventually, right? So they just know the uh, the bonds address uh, that, and the, the fact that some somebody deposited funds there, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of similar to that, uh, uh, but it's not it's not possible to completely censor or completely uh, uh, kind of prevent you from sending a confidential asset from one wallet to another. That's just not not the way it works. Okay. Cool. That like funny or not funny. Uh, this is one of the things that like whenever I hear of those government coins, what are they like CBDC? Yeah. Whenever I hear of CBDC, I can't help but think that like governments will use these to kind of implement like a transaction tax so that like there's no chance that any money being transferred is not like have say like GST or uh, what we call it in New Zealand. I don't, I don't know what it's called other places. It's like a goods and services tax and it's on like many of your purchases Similar to VAT, I think. Uh, yeah. And 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 like obviously, many people transact money, and there's no like tax when you transfer money, say one hundred quid or one hundred dollars to to your friend or whatever. 
but whenever I hear of these like CBDCs, I feel that that will become like in in inevitability that you're paying tax on like any time you move for anything, you're paying tax on it. Yeah, like uh, uh, it's not necessarily uh, like I, 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 I don't know if that would be. Uh, the, the only bad thing uh, about oh, yeah. CBDC. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, it could be the least of our problems because, uh, you know, it's uh, basically completely traceable cash, right? Who, who, who yeah. needs that? Exactly. There was, there was a really, I'll try and share it in the Telegram when I, when I can find it. There was a kind of funny that someone created and it was talking about the same thing like CBDCs. And it was saying like, uh, it was like a, an alert you would expect from like a application or something. And it was like, transaction denied. You have spent more than your quota on meat. You now need to <laughs> eat, you now need to eat like vegan option burgers or whatever. And, and it went through like a, a huge amount of these examples, like spent too much on energy. Now you can only have like one light on or cap, <laughs> cap stuff and like very, very like black mirror kind of dystopian level stuff. But I mean, it, it was really funny in like a, a dark kind of way. I'll try and find it and share. <laughs> uh, a long time ago, there was a similar kind of clip, but really long time ago uh, about a guy ordering pizza. Uh, and then, uh, like, the clerk asks him, uh, so w- which toppings would you like? And he says, like, I would like extra cheese. And he's like, you sure? With your high cholesterol? Yeah, this kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, the softs are going really well. I have accepted a few. Uh, so somebody is listening. So they created an offer for BMAX. So now I, I have more BMAX, which is great. Uh, I had to uh, give up 70 uh, stars for that and then immediately another one appeared for like uh, more bmax for like 30 stars uh, to make it a, a hundred um but uh, my offers are just, like disappearing like crazy where do we stand here i think we are very well into oh it's would you believe it it's like eight minutes to to the hour it's unbelievable uh we need to give out more more money here so let's do that <laughs> um so let me just kind of, uh, as a summary, say several things. So first of all, um, we will continue this asset swap uh, for the next 48 hours. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be awake uh, all of the 48 hours, but uh, every once in a while, we'll create a new swap over. And this is for the benefit of two things. First of all, uh, to make uh, the test last a little bit longer. Uh, see how the wallet behaves like in more kind of prolonged periods of time and also for the benefit of those who could not make it uh, to this um, space because of reasons or any other problems Uh, and also um, uh, in terms of like how these uh, uh, stars can be converted into real beam uh, what is going to happen is that I'm going to publish an address um, that uh, belongs to that i'm currently running and uh like you will be able to send stars back to this address and then either contact me on telegram or write an email um uh, to alex at beam.mw and say listen uh, this is the address that i sent you stars from and this is the offline address uh from my mainnet wallet so you need to include and we will publish these instructions obviously uh on telegram and twitter but you need to include a offline address uh, of uh, your mainnet wallet. And then we will convert the amount of stars that you sent from the address that you claimed to uh, beam one for one, one star for one beam, uh, and send you the uh, accordingly the appropriate amount to your uh, mainnet wallet to the offline address. So we don't need to kind of match uh, who is online and when. So that's how the trade is going to go down. Alternatively, you can provide your band's address, and we can send it through there. Is that is that right? We can we can send to band's addresses, yeah. Uh, yep, we can send them to band's addresses as well. Absolutely. So uh, if you haven't if you haven't got your band's address, get, get to it and secure your domain. Absolutely, do that. Also, uh, on mainnet, of course. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, the, the 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 reason the reason that I was like we can send to bands is because I I had like the stars confidential asset stuck in my mind, and I think for now uh, there's not confidential port for bands, but in the future there will be. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, but since we do have to send Beam, uh, so it's going to be fine. Uh, I think Wicked. we can also use uh, uh, the. Telegram uh, bot, right, Amir? We we, want, we could could use um, uh, Telegram words as well. But anyway, we'll publish all the instructions uh, in an orderly manner. I think after that, we'll and and I'll try and put everything that you need to know regards like the space today. And for those that have some stars, I'll put it in the newsletter tomorrow. If you haven't. Yeah, please subscribe to the newsletter. It will make my day and I will be forever happy. Uh, Alex, we have yeah. a here. I just shared it to you on Telegram from Crypto Patient. And they seem to have found the secret branch with EVM compatibility, although I cannot confirm nor deny it. What's the because name? I, because actually, I don't, I don't know. Uh, what is the name? That's a good question. They yes. have a they have a very a very well drawn arrow pointing to the branch that says. One BVN. second, one second, one second. Okay. Let me let me check that. I think I um, that's the branch. Very nice. We have a winner. That's it. Crypto Unbelievable. Patient. Very good. Very fast for, for being so patient, I must oh, say. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> and now we have our last 67 uh, stars, uh, which will make it uh, 1,000, round 1,000 in the last minute. So here goes the offer. Boom. And it's gone in. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it has been absolutely amazing. Um, absolutely. Great. So thank you very, very much for taking part uh, in this event. Once again, for the next 48 hours, every once in a while, I will publish some more offers. And uh, um, if you had any issues, uh, please report them to us. Uh, please check out Nifrit. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for being here. And we'll see you next week. Absolutely. See you next week. We will update you tomorrow in the newsletter and on Twitter with the topic for next week's space. Uh, not sure what it will be yet, but it will be a banger, I'm sure. So see you there. Yeah, see you. Good night. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.